currently live on TV. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Exeter Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting uh, for March 16th, 2021. My name is Bob Pryor. I'm the vice chair of the board. Uh, our chairperson, Joanne Petito, could not be with us this evening for personal reasons, so I will be chairing the meeting this evening. And I'm going to begin with the standard Zoom meeting disclaimer. Uh, as acting chair of the Zoning Board of Adjustment, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Public notice of this meeting was posted on the town website and on the bulletin board of the town offices at 10 Front Street. As provided in that public notice, the public may access the meeting online and via phone. Please note that all votes taken during the meeting this evening shall be done by a roll call vote. And let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, please also state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting and who that person is, son, daughter, spouse, et cetera. No need to identify pets. Uh, this is required under the right to know law of the state of New Hampshire. <clears throat> so uh, attendance, please, Ms. Davies. Here. And alone? And alone, sorry, yes. <laughs> no problem, Mr. Thielbar. I'm here and I'm alone. Mr. Baum. Here, uh, I'm alone in the room. My wife and uh, children are in the house with me. Very good. Ms. Olson Murphy? I'm here and I'm alone. Very good. Ms. Pennell? I'm here and I'm alone. Mr. Merrill? I'm here and I'm alone. And Ms. Sermon? I am here and I am alone in the room. And again, I'm Bob Pryor. I'm here, clearly, and alone in the room. Uh, so... Uh, we have one item of new business and two items of other business for the evening. The new business, which we'll begin with, uh, is the application of Noria Energy Corporation for a special exception for Article 4, Section 4.2, Schedule 1, to permit the proposed construction of a gasoline station, a convenience store with drive through a car wash, and associated site improvements, and for two variances for Article 6, Section 6.8.2, for relief from the requirement that the second 25 foot of the front yard be landscaped and to permit a pylon sign to be located approximately seven foot from the front property line where a setback of 35 feet is required. The subject property is located on a portion of the property at 158 Epping Road and situated in the C3 Epping Road Highway Commercial Zoning District. This is tax map parcel 47-1-2 and this is ZBA case number 21-3. Are the applicants with us this evening? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, good evening, uh, members of the board. I am uh, John Arnold. I'm an attorney at Hinkley Allen, uh, representing the applicant, Norea Energy. Okay. Uh, also on the call is uh, Tom Healy from Norea and Chris Pamula from GPI, the uh, project engineer. Very good. Thank you and welcome. It is normal procedure for the board to take a variance before a special exception. Uh, however, as the variance is not a use variance, and there is really no question as to the use, um, I, well, there is, but it comes under a special exception. Um, I suggest we take the special exception first and, and then treat the two variance applications second. Acceptable to everyone? On the board, I agree. I agree. Very good. Um, then, uh, Mr. Arnold, if you or your colleagues would like to make a presentation to us, we're ready to listen. I, I have one. one, I have sorry, have one I have, sorry, I have to do one thing as well. Go ahead, Rick. You first. Laura, can you turn the light up behind you? <laughs> or down, or something. There we go. Thank you. You're less yellow, too. Well, you're still yellow. <laughs> um, the other thing that we need to decide is, given the number of people that are present this evening, who is going to be voting uh, as before? Uh, all members, both regular and alternate, are allowed to participate in the discussion to ask questions. Uh, but only five members are going to be voting. Uh, and so 
Uh, that would be Ms. Davies, Mr. Thielbar, Mr. Baum, and myself as regular members, um, unless one of the four of you would not like to vote. No, nope, it appears we're okay. So of the four um, alternates who were in attendance this evening, uh, we'll have a different one vote on the variance to give everyone some experience. Um, is there anyone who would particularly like to vote, uh, participate on the uh, special exception? Show of hand. Okay, Olson, Murphy, and Merrill both had their hands up there. So one of you on the special exception and one on the variance. Flip a coin. Alphabetical. Alphabetical. I'm the special exception. <laughs> <laughs> you want the special exception, Esther? Yes. Chris, you're all, right with the, you're all right with the variance? Yep. Okay, then. For the purposes of this meeting, Ms. Olson Murphy will be voting member on the special exception, and uh, Mr. Merrill will be a voting member on the variance. Mr. Arnold, I'm finally ready. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we're here tonight in connection with the proposed development at 158 Epping Road. Um, the property is in the C3 zoning district at the corner of Epping Road and Continental Drive. You may know it uh, most recently, it was used as an auto dealership, Jaguar Exeter, which is now closed. Um, and Naria would uh, leave the front portion of the site, demolish the existing auto dealership and build a new uh, 5,500 square foot convenience store with a fueling canopy in front and a car wash in the back. Uh, as you noted, we have two applications for you tonight. The first that we're gonna address now is the, the application for a special exception for the gas station as a use. Um, and I'll go into the details of that application in just a moment, but before I do so, I'd like to uh, turn things over to, to Tom Healy to tell you just a little bit about Noria. And then after that to uh, Chris to walk you through the plan and just get, get you familiar with how the development looks in the property. And once they do that, I'll uh, come back and, and run through the criteria for the special exception. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, John. And uh, good evening, board members. I'm Tom Healy. I'm with Noria Energy. We're based out of central Massachusetts. Uh, we have a service station and car wash operations, uh, primarily in Massachusetts, uh, southern New Hampshire, and southern Maine. Um, we operate primarily under the, the, uh, the Shell brand up, up in the, the New Hampshire area. We've got locations in Portsmouth, several in Manchester, site in Raymond, uh, Kingston, and um, we have an Irving site down the road in, in Plastow also. Um, so we, um, we're licensed for several different oil company brands. Uh, one th thing that uh, differentiates us from a lot of our competitors that are, that are fuel wholesalers is, is we operate most of our own stores. So it, it's Norea employees. We've got about uh, uh, 1,300 employees um, operating in our stores throughout New England, including the uh, convenience stores, the food service operations, and the, uh, the car washes. So we take... We take great pride in, in uh, clean stores, modern stores, uh, clean landscaping, well-lit sites, uh, very customer-friendly operations. Um, and this is a location that we're very interested in developing. It fits well into our network geography, and it's uh, typical of the type of facility that, that we would be constructing these days. Um, so with that, I'd, I'd like to... Um, entertain any questions from the board about Maria, or we can turn it over to Chris, who is the uh, design engineer, to go through the uh, the site layout and explain the design of, of the location we're proposing. I think we'll have you continue with your presentation, and then we'll save all of our questions, and you can take whoever's most appropriate can answer them later on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Then I'd like to... Uh, Turn it over to Chris Tamuller from uh, GPI Engineering. Great, thanks, Tom. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, for the record, uh, Chris Tamula. I'm a uh, project manager with Greenman Peterson. Uh, I'm here in my office up in Salem, New Hampshire, and uh, I am alone in my office. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may, uh, I'd like to share my screen. Um, I can show the board uh, an aerial plan uh, of, of what's out there today, and then essentially show uh, the proposed plan of what we're proposing um, as part of the development as well. Very good. Dan, do you have to facilitate that or can he do it? He should be able to do it on his own. Yep. All right. Um, all right. So everybody, uh, everybody see this? Yep. Very well. Okay. Um, so um, as, uh, you know, as I'm sure everybody knows, 
Um, this is the, the former Jaguar dealership uh, located centrally uh, on the site. Uh, there's a, a tree line in the rear. Uh, most of the site is, is paved uh, with a slight uh, portion of landscaping along the front here. Uh, the right of way, uh, there's landscaping within the right of way. Um, Epping Road is located to the right of the plan and Continental Drive is uh, to the left. Um, you can see uh, really that the, the existing um, Jaguar dealership is really what's shown in gray with the pavement line shown along here uh, is essentially the, the lease line as part of our development. Um, so as part of our development, let me switch screens here. Um, what, we are, what we are proposing here uh, is a 5,500 square foot um, retail motor fuel outlet or a convenience store with a drive through uh, we have a fueling canopy shown in brown, uh, which has six fueling islands or 12 uh, fueling um, fuel locations. We have a 4,182 square foot uh, car wash located in the rear. Um, everything shown in green is obviously landscaping or green space. Uh, the brown colors are obviously, like I said, the buildings or the canopy uh, and everything else grayed out would be um, obviously existing pavement within Continental and um, Route 27 or Epping Road um, and pavement and um, concrete sidewalks on site. We do have uh, 22 parking spaces for the convenience store use. So there are 11 spaces in the front and 11 spaces on the side. Uh, and as I mentioned, we do have a drive through component uh, which comes around the back uh, and, and exits out in, in the, uh, the front of the site. With regards to the car wash component, um, we do have a Q lane that stacks all the way in the rear of the site. And we do have seven additional uh, parking spaces which will be used for the, uh, the, the vacuums. So essentially you, you come in through the car wash, you exit out, and then you have dedicated use to the, uh, to the vacuums, and then you exit out uh, through the site. Uh, additionally, on the site itself, we have a, a fence dumpster enclosure, which we located in the rear. We have um, a two underground fuel storage tanks for the located uh, in front of the canopy. And as we'll discuss a little bit later as part of the variance application, um, we do have a freestanding sign, which is located here, which is seven feet from the property line here and 12 feet from the property line here. Uh, access through the site uh, is via a new um, proposed uh, dual access curb cut on Continental, uh, which will provide access to the signalized intersection here. And we are also providing a new shared access uh, curb cut located uh, generally in this area. Um, as you uh, may be aware, there's a, an expansive curb cut that's out here today. Um, we are now closing off this portion of the curb cut, leaving this portion of the curb cut along lot one, and we'll have a new shared access curb cut, which will facilitate access between both uh, lot 1-1 and uh, lot 1-2. Uh, obviously, everyone's aware that you know shared access between parcels is usually a good thing, and we feel uh, this is the case uh, as well here. Um, I'm not sure how much you want me, uh, John, I'm not sure how much more you want me to get into with regards to the site. Um, if you want to talk about the special exception portion of it, or if I should get into any of the, uh, the various criteria or the green space or anything like that. No, I, I think that's good, Chris, uh, in terms sure. of an overview of the plan, I'll um, go through the criteria for the special exception and may, may refer back to the plan at, at specific points. Um, so thank you. <clears throat> the, um, our, our written application goes through all the special exception criteria and, and detail, so I'm not going to repeat it all. I, I would like to try and summarize it and highlight the, uh, the main points. Um, the first uh, criteria for a special exception, well, let, let me just back up one second. I should say that uh, gas stations are uh, not allowed by right in any, any zone, zoning district in Exeter. Uh, all gas stations require special exception. Uh, and they require, they're only allowed by special exception in two zoning districts, the C2 and the C3. Uh, so we're in one of those two, two districts. Um, as for the specific criteria, uh, the first uh, criteria is that the use is permitted by special exception. Uh, yes, as I just said, it's permitted in the, in the C3 zoning district by special exception. Uh, criteria two is that there's no threat to the public health, safety, or welfare. Um, this, this gas station is like any other. It's regulated by both state and federal law to uh, ensure uh, public safety, environmental compliance, and so on. Uh, there's nothing inherently dangerous about this location. Uh, in fact, it's, it's quite close to Route 101, uh, which makes it accessible to motorists without having to drive through uh, residential or densely populated areas to get to it. Um, criteria number three is that it'll be, it will be compatible with the zoning district and the adjacent uses. 
Uh, the C3 district is one of only two districts that allow gas stations, so it's compatible uh, with the zoning district. Uh, the adjacent uses are a tire warehouse to the north, uh, New England Truck Center and Sawbelly Brewing uh, to the south. Uh, and just up the street towards 101, there is uh, another gas station that was built, I think, in around uh, 2001. Uh, so this will be consistent with the, uh, the adjacent uses. Uh, criteria number four is that there's adequate landscaping and screening provided. Um, this is one of the areas where there's going to be a dramatic improvement to the site. Um, right now, there's a lot of pavement on the site, as, uh, as you saw in the aerial. I don't know, Chris, can you just flip back to that quickly? Thank you. Um, so it's, it's basically all, all pavement. And um, currently in front of the site, uh, you can see, uh, can you zoom in at all, Chris? Perfect, thanks. Um, so the front of the site, it's got kind of an odd entrance with a, you know, the, the curb cut comes in uh, and then kind of hits an island right at the beginning of the property. And, and there's a little driveway that runs parallel to uh, Epping Road to kind of a secondary curb cut there, but also the pavement continues up almost to Continental Drive. And um, along the southerly lot line, if you, if you scroll down a little bit more, Chris, um, you can see it's basically just pavement that extends across the property line um, and kind of connects the two parking lots. Although I think, I think there is a fence there. Um, and if we flip back, Chris, to the, uh, the colored site plan once more, um, you can see that as part of the uh, development, there's a lot of green spaces being added to the site. The, uh, the driveway and the secondary curb cut up on the, uh, the front of the property are being removed and uh, that whole island is gonna be reseeded. It's gonna be green space. And there'll be new landscaping along the southerly property line as well, uh, which will make the site uh, you know, more attractive and provide some se separation and definition between the two sites where there isn't any um, right now. Um, <clears throat> criteria number five is that there'll be adequate uh, parking uh, and ingress and egress. Uh, as Chris mentioned, we're providing uh, 22 parking spaces here. Uh, in addition to that, there's gonna be 12 uh, parking spaces that, at the fueling stations. Uh, there's only 19 spaces required, so we're providing more than, more than required for the use. And as for ingress and egress, uh, this is another area of dramatic improvement over existing conditions. Um, as, as I mentioned a moment ago, there's kind of an odd entrance into the property off of Epping Road with the uh, two curb cut scenario and the offset driveway running parallel to, uh, to, ex to Epping Road. And uh, that's all gonna be pulled out. Uh, as Chris mentioned, there's gonna be one consolidated curb cut that'll be shared with the property to the south, uh, which will simplify ingress and egress, make it more direct, uh, allow traffic to flow more easily. And there's also that secondary curb cut that's being added on uh, Continental Drive, which will you know, give another point of access for cars coming in and out and help ease the strain of uh, vehicles entering and exiting the site. Um, <clears throat> criteria number six is that the use conforms to all other applicable regulations. Uh, the zoning ordinance has several specific requirements that all ga gas stations have to comply with, uh, things like the maximum number of stations in town, uh, screening for many residential properties, uh, the setback uh, for fuel pumps, uh, and so on. Um, this, this project has been designed to comply with all of those specific requirements. Um, we are requesting uh, the variances that you're aware of tonight uh, regarding the front yard setbacks, um, which we'll address uh, later, but in terms of the specific requirements for the use, uh, those are all met with this design. Uh, and then criteria number seven uh, really just sets forth that the, uh, the development may need a site plan review by the planning board. We're aware of that. It will require site plan review. Um, we're in the process of um, preparing that and proceeding with that application. Uh, the final two criteria are for other specific uses that don't relate to gas stations, so they're not applicable to this uh, application. And um, so that's really it for the criteria. I'm happy to, uh, to address any questions that you might have uh, about them or the, or the site layout. And, uh, and I'll pause for that. Hi. Thank you very much for your presentation. I appreciate it. Um, members of the board have questions, please. Um, I think I can get my uh, blue hands up here on the board. Laura? 
I'm just, um, thank you, Bob. I'm um, just trying to understand the site a little better. Um, it's a single lot with two uses on it now, is that correct? That's correct. And it will remain a single lot with two separate uses in the future, is that the idea? That's correct. The front part of the site for this development would be uh, separately leased. There'd be a lease line that defines the front of the property for this development. And so in that sense, it would be separate from the rear of the property, but legally speaking, it's still one uh, legal lot of record. There's no subdivision taking place. Okay. And then the access, the shared access with the site to the south, is there going to be some type of access easement that is, you know, uh, mutual access easement? Yes, uh, there is. And Chris or Rob, I don't know if you want to speak to this uh, any further. I believe there already is a form of access easement in place and that may need to be modified with the, the changes that are occurring to the, the location of the curb cut. Yeah, um, you know, just uh, so everyone's aware, so the, there is a 50 foot access easement that is shown here uh, in this small little rectangular box here. Uh, it's existing 50 foot access easement, so that'll provide um, whether we need to modify that, which we're not, we, which we don't believe we do, um, or just leave it as is, as is. It does provide access uh, for for both lots. Okay, thank you. That seems like a good idea. Um, and then the right of way that ran parallel to Epping Road um, or the driveway, was that just an odd configuration of, of traffic flow on the site or was there a legal reason for that? Uh I, I don't know if anybody else, Chris, um, and I actually think we have the property owner on the line too. He, he may have more insight. Um, I, don't, I don't know the history of that, um, why it was configured like that. It yeah, was, I'm not, um, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, back in the day when Holloway developed the property, he, uh, it was state owned land, they had given it to him and something happened and they took it back and then it was given to the town. But when that happened, they were only able to get that driveway like that. And that was before the other parcel was really developed. So it, it's a very odd driveway, but back then that's Holloway used that. I don't know if any of the board remembers, but it was one open lot between 156 and 158. So they didn't really need that driveway, but they just had it there. And it's been researched that there's no further need for it to, you know, all the requirements no, have been met. And no, we've spoken to the town manager and with um, public works and they had no problem with it either. And I believe it is it Paul, the engineer for the town or in charge of public works. I, I may have his name wrong, but he's been over. We've looked at it together. Okay. Because you said it was owned by the state, so just wondering. Well, if it was owned by the state and then given to the town. I see. Okay. And the um, I agree that the egress from, is it Continental, to the signalized intersection is a great idea. Um, this site is on water and sewer, I take it? Correct. Okay. And is the drive-through for the convenience store, is the... What, what is the purpose of that? Is there a restaurant in there or what's happening? Yeah, uh, and, and Tom, uh, Tom Healy from Nuria um, is here. I think you could answer that better than uh, myself or John. Yes, uh, this is Tom Healy again. So we, we would have some plan for some type of food service in there. Um, that has not been identified yet, but, uh, you know, we, we've worked with that. Uh, we have worked with um Dunkin' Donuts on several locations. Um, we have a Starbucks at one of our locations. Um, we have another type of food service called the Mottos, which is more popular than Maine that, uh, that we operate also, but we, we haven't uh, finalized what, uh, what that operation would be. Okay. Uh, I think those are pretty much my questions. I was just trying to get a better overall understanding of the property and its history. Thank you, Laura. I want to follow up with a question on, uh, on Laura's first question. Um, I just want a clarification on the ownership of the property, if, if you don't mind. So I see Mr. Lampert's on the call as well. Um, is the underlying property all owned and will continue to be owned? Um, I assume by some entity controlled by the Lamperts and 
there will be a lease for this party uh, parcel. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Uh, and so the, uh, uh, there's no issue as far as whether, so the, right now there is a chain link fence that extends probably three quarters of the distance from the, uh, from the back corner of the green property as we're looking at it right now toward the front. Uh, and so that will be closed off. So there will be limited access between the two. That's perfectly okay with, uh, with all of the people involved. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Mr. Chairman, I, I can, uh, you know, add to that. Um, so that was actually one of the, one of the key factors in laying out the site is uh, we did not want to disrupt anything that was going to be occurring on lot one. Um, so the existing fence line runs right along this dark black line, which is the, the property line and essentially the lease line between the two properties. So as you can see, as, as it is today, the pavement goes all the way up to this chain link fence and continues across uh, into lot one. We'll be essentially stopping the pavement at that fence line, not altering that fence line whatsoever, and essentially creating a green space between that fence line and our property. Very good. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other blue hands, so I'm going to continue for a moment with some more questions of my own. Um, employee parking. I don't see highlighted there. Yeah, um, employee parking, essentially, you know, most of the time uh, there, the, the employee parking is going to be, you know, in the rear of the site. Um, you know, obviously the customers are going to use the the main um uh, spaces along the front of the store. Um, the way a lot of these gas stations work today is you uh, you come to the pumps, uh, you're getting gas, uh, whether you sit there, get get gas, finish up, finish fueling, and then walk to the store. Uh, that's what most people actually do. Um, uh, in, in the event that they leave the uh, leave the dispenser and, you know, there is parking along the front of the building. Um, as, as John did mention, uh, we are required to have 19 spaces based on uh, the size of the building. We do have 22. Uh, then that excludes the, uh, the spaces at the pumps. Okay, thank you. Um, the um, curb cut coming in off of Continental Drive. Uh, as I surveyed the site yesterday, I noticed that there's a, a, a grade differential there. Uh, is there any problem with, um, uh, and this is more of a planning, probably planning board is going to question this, uh, but is there any problem with that grading? Yeah, and I can that in your parking lot. Yeah, and I can answer that as well. Uh, so grading was one of the other items that we uh, we looked at other than the, uh, the existing fence line. And as you can see, uh, there's a thick gray line running along the side, the rear and up around here. Uh, and that's a proposed retaining wall. So uh, we're envisioning that the retaining wall is going to be uh, in, a, in more of a, a cut situation on this end, and then you'll be in more of a fill situation. So you'll be bringing in, bringing in soil and dirt to raise up the, the lower level of the site, and you'll be cutting out a portion of the site up here uh, to make up that great difference. Okay, good. Thank you. Final question. Access to the wood lot at the back will be off of Continental and not through either your property or the abutting uh, property to the south. Correct. The existing, that was one of the other factors uh, in locating the uh, the retaining wall. You can see the existing driveway is located here. I, I assume that's what you're talking about, Mr. Chairman? It this is. Yep. yep. Um, so this driveway is located here. So we've pushed a fence, a guardrail, and the retaining wall far enough away uh, so there'll be no impact to that uh, existing dr uh, driveway. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Thielbar, you have your hand up. You may still be muted, Rick. There I am. There we go. It's Wendy's computer. I have trouble running it. Oh, sure. Blame her. <laughs> so, uh, in terms of the property, there's a, the part that you've, that sits between the road, between uh and and this plot plan, the property line is listed at about fifty eight feet. Who who does own that? That's the uh, that's within the right of way for uh, Epping Road. I believe that portion of Epping Road is uh, owned and controlled by the town. Mm -hmm. So all of that that you're. You're going to landscape actually belongs to the town. 
that belongs to the town and as part of this plan we're pulling the the driveway and curb cut out of that area that existed and we're re and we're going to reseed uh what was there as asphalt uh, so it's consistent with the rest of the island along the uh, the side of the road okay. uh, we don't we don't anticipate any plantings any trees or or bushes within the right-of-way uh there is about eight feet of room between the proposed pavement line and the right of way line. So we do envision uh, maybe some uh, some low growth plantings within this small strip of land, but within, uh, as Mr. Arnold had noted, uh, within this area here, within the 58 feet, uh, it'll just be back uh, down to uh, a loam and seed. So natural, so natural grass. Okay, but it, that belongs to the town. So have you, who, who is responsible for taking care of the planting? So any of the plantings that are on the the, the um, within that eight feet, those would be actual plantings. You know, like I said, some small bushes or shrubs that would be uh, maintained by uh, by Nuria. Um, in essence, uh, I would probably assume, and maybe John, you can jump in on this. You know, um, they're landscaping when they're when they're cleaning up the site. They would probably just uh, you know mow the um, the right of way as well. Can I jump in? Identify yourself. Uh, Michael Lampert, property owner. Please do, Mike. Thank you. Um, current, currently, we maintain that. Um, it's town property, but it's our easement. Um, we plow it. There's lights on it. The electrical's on it. There's irrigation on it. Um, Noria would be mowing that, maybe not all the way to Epping Road, but at least to the middle of the drainage ditch, kind of as we do currently. And instead of that pavement, there'd be grass that they would be maintaining. So can we see where the Epping Road, the paved part of Epping Road is on this drawing? It's yep. So the, let me get my little highlighter here. So this is the actual pavement line. That's not Epping Road. That's the right of way. That's right. That's the right of way. That's, that's the right of way. And this is the actual paved line along Epping Road. Okay. And, and do you do you know where the traffic light? Yep. Is? So the so, the, um, so there is. Um, oh, let me grab the aerial. Yeah. So the mass arms are located here at the intersection. Um, one second, Chris. There's a little box that shows the traffic control signal on your drawing. Sure. So here's, here's a view at the intersection. Um, so there's a, there's a traffic control box um, and you know, there's obviously the utility pole and you can see the, the pavement running along the side and the grass area as well on the front. So this, this is out of order, but when you're talking about your sign, your, is your proposed, proposed location essentially in the location of the existing sign? So the proposed sign is located here. And so here, here you can see the existing edge of pavement here. Uh, so it's further back from the existing edge of pavement. Uh, I believe this is the existing sign. Uh, go correct. back to the image that you just showed us, the photograph you just showed us. And there's a sign right there. there. Yep, so the Jaguar, so my apologies. Yeah, it's all right. And so it's pretty close to the same location. Yes, I'm sorry. This is the Jaguar sign. Okay. And this is the proposed sign. Okay, very close to each other. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Is, this is Laura. Um, is there a reason that it needs to be so close to the corner of the property? Could it, could it not be a little further back? What are you? Are we asking about the sign or, or something else? Yeah, let's the let's, sign. Let's I know that's sign. not part of the uh, yeah. special exception. It's the variance, but yeah, let's stick with the special exception for now and ask the sign questions later. All right. Thanks. I'm set. Uh, Mr. Baum. Thank you, Bob. I, I have some questions that are a little off, a little off topic of the special exception, but um, I just want to make sure I understand the layout. Um, and just looking at the um, uh, the open space numbers, open space building coverage, that is based on the full 
lot rather than just the least uh, the least area. Is that correct? That that is correct. It is the overall lot one dash two, which includes uh, the area in the back. Okay. Do you have a sense of what the percentages are, um, with just based on the uh, on the least area? Uh, off the top of my head, I do not have that number. Um, we do, again, we base it on the overall the overall uh, lot area of the um, both parcels, both lease areas. Yep, and which I mean, which is it's, it's one lot, so it seems appropriate. Although, obviously, it may may um, impact future development of the rear piece. But I'm sure, you're you're all aware of that. So, thank you. I, I, if I if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I I did so. We actually do uh, within the lease limits. Uh, we actually do have twenty two percent open space. I, I, I do so. Um, note fourteen on the on the on the actual Colorado plan. Um, I forgot that we actually did do um, the overall um, impervious coverage on the entire lot existing, the impervious coverage based on the entire parcel, and then the impervious coverage within the actual lease limits. So we're at seventy eight percent impervious, therefore twenty two percent. Um, open space where, where, tw where 20 percent is required mr bomb anything else sir no that answered my question okay are there any further questions from the board of the applicant well on the on the application um when you answered question nine, you refer to article 2.2.35, and I couldn't see how you got the uh, belief that nine didn't apply to the very gasoline tanks. Let me just take a look here at the um, number nine. Um, so number nine is, am I, uh, oh, sorry, I thought I was muted. Um, so number nine is if the application is for a special exception for the hazardous storage of material. And if you look at the uh, zoning ordinance, there's a separate use category and a separate definition for hazardous storage of material that is different from gasoline stations. And specifically it relates to um, like pipelines and things like that, where you're storing uh, materials for distribution as opposed to retail gasoline stations. And that, that was a discussion actually, to the extent there's any question the board has about that. I had a discussion with your code enforcement officer about that and he confirmed that uh, interpretation. The confusion might be, it's actually 2.2.33 in mind. So maybe somebody else has a more updated one. Hazardous storage um, as opposed to gasoline stations, which is a separate one. Okay. Yeah. Apologies if the section reference was wrong, but those yeah, are the two. It might've been the dating of mine. We all have different iterations. Mine's actually 2014. So it's probably been updated since then. 2.2. So would be covered by the gasoline or automotive service station definition rather than the hazardous storage definition. Correct. Okay. So in other words, none of the storage here is other than for retail use. Correct. Okay. So the, the, yeah, the reference, the reference should probably be 32 as opposed to 33. 32 applies here. 33 does not because it's not hazardous. So correct. Okay. I apologize. No, no, no. We're good. It's a good question to ask. I, I like these questions. They're good. I mean, it's not clear them to me now and discover them later. Bob, it's not clear. I mean, I will say as an aside, it's not clear how this would even apply. If it did apply, it looks like this is ultimately a planning board question anyway, since it's based on the opinion of the board, whether it's potentially explosive. So. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions from members of board of the applicant, I will at this point open this up to the public. 
and ask members of the public, abutters and otherwise, people who have been notified, uh, as well as other members of the Exeter community, if they have any comments or questions, uh, please identify yourself to uh, Exeter TV. We'll put you on. Now, I'll wait a minute to see if anybody comes on. Dan, I don't know if we have anyone or not. There is one person and their hand has not gone up. Okay. I'll wait a few more seconds to see if anybody wants to step in. Uh, okay. I guess there's no members of the public that wish to comment on this as a, uh, not a controversial application as opposed to many of ours in the past when there's a line at this stage of the meeting. Uh, so I will close the public session. Uh, and before we move to deliberations, I will ask uh, the applicant if there's anything that they wish to add in summation uh, before we move to deliberations. Mr. Arnold? Uh, I, I do not. Do uh, Chris or Tom have anything? I'm all set, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Terrific. Thank you very much. We're going to move into the deliberative uh, uh, portion of the meeting. Uh, and uh, again, as a reminder, it will be the four voting members plus uh, Ms., uh, the four regular members plus uh, Ms. Olson Murphy, who are the, uh, the five voting members this evening, although any member of the board uh, can participate in the deliberations. Um, I think it is important that we go through the criteria here, but I'll just start by saying, uh, asking if anyone has any opening comments, if there's any, any observations anyone would like to meet, make. Oh, gosh, we're all quiet this evening. This is shocking. I was looking for any specific information about how many uses can be on a, a single parcel. And I didn't see it. Um, I don't know if anybody else gave that any thought. Um, it doesn't appear that it's limited. So unless somebody found something that I didn't. Uh, I, it occurred to me, and I, my assumption, uh, Laura, was that if the mobile station, which also went through zoning board approval, uh, also on Epping Road, which has the same number of uses, if not the same uses, which is retail, uh, gas, retail, groceries, drive-through, and car wash, um, it's, it's the same range of uses. So my assumption is that that project set the precedent this, that's only what's on the first, the front half of this lot. There's an additional and completely separate use to the rear. Correct. So I just wanted to make sure we weren't missing anything in regard to that. I think it's fine. It's. I'm, I'm not sure. aware of a limitation, Mr. Baum. Are you? My recollection, and I, you know, I'm going from memory here without checking. So, I, you know, I keep that in mind. But my recollection is that our ordinance does not prohibit multiple uses on one lot okay. for commercial for commercial yeah. yeah um it's also not clear to me what the rear use is on this i know there's a squandered up storage but it looks primarily kind of wood yeah it's processing least, yeah it's leased to um uh his name his last name is connor and he runs a retail wood operation okay. uh, so it's for the storage and and uh uh you know, breaking down of, of timber uh, into uh, uh, into firewood. You, you can buy a cord from them. Yeah, but my yeah, my recollection is it is not prohibited. I would say that the applicants are at their risk on this if it is an issue. But I would think this is something that you know Doug Eastman would have vetted. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Would someone like to walk us through the um, special exception criteria to make sure that we cover everything? One of the benefits of being the chair, I don't get to do that. I can do it, I suppose. All right, I'll do it. Um, number one, that the use is permitted special exception is set forth in Article 4.2, Schedule 1. Yes, it is. Gas stations are permitted um, in the C3 zoning district by special exception. Number two, that the use is so designed, located, and proposed to be operated that the public health, safety, welfare, and convenience will be protected. Um, 
I have no particular issue with this at all. Uh, I personally think that the way in which they've got this organized with uh, two separate uh, entrances and egresses, one off of the, I guess you would say the southbound direction off of Epping Road and the other off of uh, Continental Drive uh, is probably good. I would hope that there would be, the planning board would, and this will and we will get there, this will have to go to planning board. Um, my only concern about traffic has to do with somebody exiting from the um, from the shared drive on Epping Road or the shared entrance on Epping Road, attempting to take a left across traffic there. Uh, but that's for planning board to decide whether that's a safety issue or not. So that's my only small concern there. Does anyone else want to say anything about number two or we, we look okay there? It's good. Yep. I, and I agree with all your points, Bob. All right. And that it is planning and that it's the, it's the sort of thing that the planning board is, is well equipped to address. Uh, the proposed use will be compatible with the zoning district and adjoining post 72 development. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, gasoline stations uh, are, are restricted uh, uh, in in Exeter, uh, new construction at least, uh, to um, to two zones. Uh, this being one of them, uh, and it is entirely appropriate that there would be a, a station in this uh, location in this zone. So I have no problem with number three. Okay. Number four, that adequate landscaping and screening are provided as required. Um, I think we uh, will end up with a development that is actually more uh, compatible uh, with other locations along Epping Road, especially ones on the same side of Epping Road and to the west, uh, where you have the Decorating Center and Rockingham uh, Glass or Portland Glass, whatever it is, and a few other businesses, each of which has a a fairly significant strip of grass. Uh, and um, uh, I mean, frankly, you've got some scruffy trees and, um, and, an, and an outdated building now. So I think the overall improvement in the, in the appearance, whether it's landscaping or not, uh, is appropriate uh, and welcome. And the screening in this case would be from, I guess it would be from the use behind all, and, and the use next door. Um, I think both of which uh, are being appropriately handled by this uh, by this application. So I'm okay with number four. <laughs> number five, that adequate off-street parking and loading is provided and ingress and egress is designed to cause minimum interference with traffic on abutting streets. Parking is obviously not a problem. Uh, they're providing 22 where 19 are required. I did not go through the calculation. I don't know if anybody else did uh, to, to get to the number 19. Um, but I'm assuming that that was discussed with, uh, with planning staff and that that number is accurate. They're not seeking relief for that. Uh, and I think that given the constraints of the, of the, of the lot, I think the, uh, having the two entrances um, is appropriate. And again, I think that there's a, an issue that can go to planning board as far as safety is concerned. Um, but I'm basically okay with number five. Hearing no objections, I'll move on. That the use conforms with all applicable regulations governing the district where located. Um, gas stations are governed specifically, um, and we've gone through um, many of the points that are raised here in their presentation of number six, uh, the properties in a, in a good location, special exception. Um, I, I walked through this with, with Doug uh, on the phone earlier today, Mr. Eastman, and I think this will be either the fourth or the fifth gas station in Exeter where uh, we're allowed to have 36 uh, based on the red number of vehicles that are registered in town. So not a question there. Um, this is not about a residential property. Uh, pumps must be located at least 25 feet from the front lot line. Uh, they obviously meet that criteria. Um, Vehicle service work. There is no vehicle service work. This is not a, a gas station combined with a, 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 a other forms of service. Uh, and uh, no unregistered vehicles. Uh, again, that doesn't really apply here because there is no service work being performed here. 
So I think it meets all of the fairly complex requirements for gas stations in number six. Agreed. Hearing no objections and one agreement, I'll move on. Number seven, um, I would say that this, that we should make a point of saying that this is going to go to planning board. I'm assuming that it would anyway, um, but I think we should make the point that this should go to planning board. I want planning board, especially to take uh, into consideration the proposed uh, uh, entrance and exit off of uh, Continental Drive, which I assume is town owned. Um, uh, 101 at this point is probably town owned as well. Laura, do you have a sense of it's a state road or not? 27 is a state route. Um, 101 is definitely state owned. Right. Sorry, I said 101. 27 is, is a state route. Um, they said that it, this portion is town owned. Um, it might be part of the urban con compact district. I don't know. Um, I was surprised to hear that. I would have thought that that's the state's right of way, but. Um, I would expect that the planning board would understand whether or not that a state uh, approval is required for a curb cut, uh, but there is already a curb cut there. Would fall under the purview of, of the local um, or the district six for DOT, but the um, Continental Drive one would be a, a town issue. The town issue, correct. And there is already a curb cut, if you will, uh, for this property. Uh, it's being modified, but it's not an addition. Right. Right. From they the would state. still need to get it, the modification approved, but okay. I, um, I don't see that it would be an issue. Okay. Very good. So I'm going to say that whoever makes the motion on this uh, uh, acceptance say that, th that this definitely has to go to planning board as a condition of approval. All commercial site plans have to go to planning board for site plan approval. So it will definitely have to, but if there's specific issues, if you want to have the, um, the new curb cut on Continental be something that you want to have them focus on. We can list that. Yeah, I'm more interested with egress and ingress and, to, and, and traffic safety than I am on, on uh, Epping Road than I am on the uh, okay. than I am on the curb cut on Continental. Um, <laughs> number eight, that the use shall not adversely affect abutting or nearby property values. Certainly we've had no, no testimony. Um, either uh, uh, for or again that. I personally think that cleaning this property up and modernizing it is gonna certainly help uh, abutting property values. I can't imagine there would be a negative impact to this at all. So I think we meet number eight. Number nine uh, is not the case because this is not the storage of hazardous material. And number 10, it is not a professional or tech park district. So, it meets all of the eight appropriate criteria uh, for a special exception. Motion? Well, before we make a motion, I, and this is out of uh, line anyhow, but the <laughs> application is from uh, Noria Energy Corporation, mm -hmm. but they're not the owner. Can we give... Uh, okay, we're, we're dealing with the property, not with the people who are going to run the facility. I'm assuming that they are going to have a long-term lease on the property, and therefore they are the owner of the business, even if they're not the owner of the underlying land. The and owner they, of the property should have executed a permission to to have this application be um, submitted by somebody else. I'm not sure if that happened. An, an owner authorization is listed in the list of documents. I don't see it in the packet, but I am, I'm fairly comfortable that it has been provided, especially because the owner is here right. and has spoke, has spoken on behalf of the application. Yeah, it was so, not part of the packet, though. It should have been. It, it, it is listed. I have a feeling that it, it is... My sense is we didn't get a copy of it, but it's been provided. It is listed on page seven of the application as the list of accompanying material. But, it, but in any event, the, the corporation isn't the owner of the property, and the property is 
what's getting what's getting the the change, the special exception, or is that wrong? No, that's correct, Rick. But I don't. But it isn't an issue because the owner's given their authorization for this company to for the applicant to file this application. To so it, it's going to run to the it's going to run to the property but it doesn't really matter who the applicant is as, as long as the owner has given their authorization for okay, the application but but the owner is the one who is technically getting the the uh, special exception and i'm not sure that there's a paper trail documenting that i mean we can go ahead and use the the application uh this name with what we vote on but i think there ought to be some uh technical connection between what we're doing and the property not the people who are running the facility well i think it is rick that the approval runs to the property okay and so. i think that i think that mr Baum has has uh provided evidence that there is such a document uh, because it is listed um, even though we don't oftentimes we physically have a copy of the document as part of our packet well I actually looked for one and I apologize for not raising the issue earlier but I couldn't find anything yeah um, there's evidence of it and I think the other evidence of it is the fact that the property owner uh, uh, is 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 part of this conversation and wouldn't be testifying if, in fact, there was any issue as to uh, clear legal connection uh, between the property owner and Nuria. So I, th I think we should be comfortable with that. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I can do is that I would, uh, as acting chair, before I sign the official letter of approval, if such a thing is granted, uh, I will ask to see the um, uh, authorization. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Um, I went through the criteria, but I shouldn't make a motion as chair. So if someone would like to make a motion, I'd appreciate that. Uh, if you're uh, Go I'll ahead. Make a motion to approve um, the special exception um, for a convenience store with drive through gasoline station and car wash as presented. Second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? So you avoided the issue by not including the name of the corporation in the... Uh, not at all. The application is in the name of Nuria Energy Corporation, and we're going to make... We're okay. Gonna verify that Nuria Energy... It's all tied together. Right. Good. In fact... And again, it, and it runs to the property. Yeah. So, good. If, if, okay. The only thing that I thought of is that you had wanted, as part of the um, motion, to have something about the planning board review with particular attention to ingress and egress on Epping Road. Yes, but I didn't make the motion. <laughs> well, do we want to amend the motion, or are we okay with it as is? Ah. Uh. I understand that as a commercial development, it is going to have to go to planning board and planning board is going to cover this. And I'm, I'm content not to have it be a condition. I don't think it's necessary, but I'm I willing agree. to go along with it. If, if no, you would I, like, if you would I feel more comfortable. No, I agree that it's not necessary. I'm not going to make an issue out of it. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded. Any further discussion of the motion? Hearing none, I will call the vote. Um, Ms. Davies. Um, I vote aye. Mr. Thielbar. I vote aye. Mr. Baum. I vote aye. Um, Ms. Olson Murphy. I vote aye. And chair votes aye. The special exception passes 5-0. And we will move on to the next application, which is for two variances. Uh, back to you, Mr. Arnold. 
Thank you all very much. And um, we, we did submit a uh, authorization from the uh, property owner with both, both applications. I'm sorry if it didn't make it into your packets, but if, uh, if we need to resend that or provide any additional copies, we're ha happy to do so. Thank you. Um, great, so moving along to the variance application. Um, this relates uh, solely to the front yard setback. Uh, section 6.8.2 of the zoning ordinance requires a 50 foot setback uh, along the front. Um, and within that setback, the second 25 feet of it needs to be landscaped and all signs have to be set back 35 feet. Um, so we comply with the building setback of 50 feet, but we don't provide landscaping within the second 25. Uh, you can see that we provide about eight feet inside of the property line of, of green space. Uh, and we don't provide 35 feet for the sign. That's about seven feet. Uh, from the front property line. So that's that's an explanation of what the two variances are for. Um, when you take a look at the, uh, the site plan that Chris has pulled up on the screen, uh, you can see that the right of way for Epping Road is unusually wide. Uh, and we, you know, we touched on this when we were looking at the plan earlier, but I just want to emphasize that that dimension that Chris is, is pointing out there, that's 58 feet between the edge of pavement and the front property line. Um, so as we saw in the aerial, uh, some of this area is currently paved with the driveway and curb cut that's there today, uh, but those are going to be removed and this area is going to be reseeded. So this whole green Island you see on the plan right now is all going to be essentially grass or, or green space. Um, with the eight feet or so that we provide of green space inside of the property line, uh, there's, there's about 65 feet of green space between the edge of the road and the, uh, the, the front edge of the parking lot on the site. And uh, the sign, uh, if you measure it up to the, the uh, edge of the road, it's about 41 feet um, to the edge of the pavement. Um, since, all, since most of that area is all technically within the right of way, it doesn't count towards the calculation of the setback. Um, you know, the setback is measured from the lot line, uh, not the, the edge of pavement. Uh, which is the need for the variances. Um, the, the general theme that you're gonna kind of hear, hear throughout my discussion, the criteria is that even though uh, we need these variances, the actual setbacks from the roadway uh, exceed what's required. Um, we're coming up short only because the property line is, is unusually far back from the edge of the pavement. Normally the property line would be much closer to the edge of the road. And a lot of that green space that you're seeing there would count towards um, towards the calculation. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna, again, kind of summarize the variance criteria and, and happy to kind of pause or discuss any of them in more detail if you have questions. But uh, in terms of an overview, uh, the first two variance criteria, the, the public interest and the spirit of the ordinance, um, those are both followed in this case. Uh, for motorists going down the road, they're going to see about 65 feet of green space uh, between the edge of the road and any pavement on the site. And they're going to see about 41 feet of green space from the edge of the road to the pylon sign. Um, so the proposed setbacks um, that we have here actually result in a more uniform and cohesive streetscape uh, because they allow the fuel canopy to be aligned with the buildings on the adjacent properties. And uh, Chris, if you zoom out on that plan again, so we can see the building to the south. Uh, what I mean there is that you can see the front edge of the canopy on our site uh, aligns generally with the front of the building to the south. And um, it's not shown on the, on the plan, the property to the north across Continental Drive, but it's, it's a similar sit back, setback. The building is all kind of aligned generally along the front um, between those three sites. So allowing the variances for these, you know, the, the setbacks that we're asking for help to create uh, that uniformity and, and kind of a, a consistent building uh, frontage along the street. Um, so uh, the, the primary purpose of the setbacks is to beautify the streetscape and provide a buffer between the road and the development, and those are all being served here. Um, so we believe that it is uh, both consistent with the public interest and the spirit of the ordinance. Regarding criteria number three and four, uh, the variances will cause no harm to the general public or negatively impact property values. 
so this project, as we talked about with a special exception application, it's, it's going to be a dramatic improvement to the property. It's going to remove a lot of existing pavement along the streetscape and along the southerly property line. Um, it's going to beautify the property with new greenscape, uh, green space and landscaping. And it's going to bring new businesses to the site, um, you know, where the building's currently, uh, currently vacant and not used. And all these improvements will benefit the surrounding businesses uh, and the general public. Um, and I'd note that as a practical matter, uh, there is a public benefit served by allowing the reduced setbacks to accommodate for the, the unusually wide right of way here, uh, because it makes it easier for motorists to locate and identify the site. If the development were tucked back further into the property, um, the buildings would sit behind the building frontage of the adjacent properties uh, and would be a considerable distance from the edge of Epping Road. So motorists coming down Epping Road uh, may not even notice the gas station until they're right on it or, or driving past it. Um, as for the hardship criteria, uh, this also relates to the uni uniqueness of the, uh, the right away with. Uh, if we were forced to strictly comply with the setbacks, the entire development you see on the plan would, would need to shift back by about 50 feet. And this would result in the buildings, as, as I said, being set back further than the adjacent buildings and um, would impair the visibility of the site. And not only is that an issue for you know, public interest and, and ease of motorists coming down the road, but it's also important for the long-term success of any business uh, that's gonna go into this property, even more so with a business like a gas station and convenience store, which relies on customer traffic um, from you know, motorists going past, past the site as opposed to making it a destination. Um, and, and those folks are looking for a, you know, a quick and easy stop. And, and this allows for it to, be, to, to serve that purpose. Okay. Uh, the general public purpose of the ordinance uh, is still satisfied because the ample green space uh, is being provided between the, the edge of the roadway and the site. And so for that reason, the, the strict application of the setbacks isn't necessary to achieve, achieve those purposes. Um, I guess with that, I'll, I'll wrap things up. I'll, I'll say that we're excited about the project. We think it'll be a great addition to this part of town. It'll we'll breathe new life into this, uh, this, this vacant property. And we think the variances are reasonable based on the configuration of the property and that unusually wide right away, uh, right in front of it. Um, granting the variances will, um, you know, help ensure the future success of this business and, and really any business that goes into this site. And uh, we do believe that they're uh, reasonable requests. So uh, we, we appreciate your attention and we'll, we'll open up to questions. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. I appreciate the presentation. For the members of the board, uh, we were in our packets given two maps, one showing the property map of Exeter and the other showing the specific uh, improvements sought by the applicant. If you go to the first map, and there's something I really hadn't appreciated until just now, and uh, you look at, uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the map, you can see how very wide Route 27, Epping Road is in this area, much wider than it is uh, on other uh, segments uh, of Route 27 that are, that are visible here. I don't know if anybody can see the same map that I'm looking at. Uh, it is surprising, and it was one of the things that actually confused me is why are we getting these, uh, these requests? Uh, and it is, in fact, because of the significant width of Route 27 uh, at this point. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I, again, driving between Route 101 and the, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and the end of Epping Road, um, uh, I was actually surprised how consistent the signage is in terms of its distance from the roadway. Um, not distance from the property line, which as the applicant pointed out is often uh, invisible uh, in these cases, but rather from, the, uh, from Route 27 itself. Whether it's the mobile station, Portland Glass, Exeter Decorating Center, there's a cabinet company, um, there's the, the rinks, uh, Garrison Glen, they're all sort of between 15 and 20 feet back uh, from, the, from the roadway and in um, in, in that grass strip that is cons fairly consistently provided. So the streetscape is pretty consistent. And um, I think that the application indicates that this parcel will be treated in a very similar manner to other properties uh, in the area. Um, with that, I will open it up to the members of the board. I see Mr. Thielbar has already found his blue hand. 
remarkable what you can do with the training. There you go, sir. So uh, my question, uh, I, I actually don't have any problem at all with the setback from 27. Where I'm puzzled is what what is we're basically talking about a corner lot and we're only 12 feet from the road on that side. Does the side not count? I, that's a question. And that trying not to use my evil tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the, we reviewed this with the uh, the code enforcement officer, and it is a corner lot, and there is some question. There was some question we had about how the front yard requirements applied to um, to both of those uh, frontages. And based on our discussion with the code enforcement officer, uh, our understanding is that he determined that the uh, 50 foot building setback applied off of Continental Drive. Uh, but that the requirements in terms of the uh, section 6.8.2 uh, green space and signage, uh, the only relief we needed to request with respect to those were off of Epping Road. And I don't know if that's based on historic interpretation or administrative gloss within the town, but that's, that's the discussion that we had had uh, when we were reviewing the required relief for the design. Okay. I wonder if the engineer would mind bringing up the um, uh, highlighting that portion where the sign is to be located that indication indicates on the chart where the existing um, fairly significant sort of chunky sign base is now. And feel free to comment on this if you'd like, sir. Yeah. Um, so again, Mr. Chairman, um, so the the, the open rectangle is the location of the existing sign approximately. And my crude little uh, red mark here is the location of the, uh, the proposed sign. So it's moving a couple of feet closer to Continental Drive and a couple of feet closer to Epping Road. That is correct, sir. Well, and again, I think it, it, the Epping Road clearance uh, still meets the conceptual 35 feet, if you will. Yes. So it's still, the, my question then is what, whether it's 12 or 15 feet from uh, Continental Way, what the rule is. And I guess maybe the answer is that there isn't a rule, but it probably, if we decide it's okay with us, we ought to be specific about that because the, the wording in the request suggests that it doesn't matter. Well, the, the code that's being referenced is 6.8.2, and 6.8 is specific to the Epping, to Epping Road. And 6.8 to do with 6.8.2, why is that hard for me to say, um, is specific to front yard. And the... 6.8.3 also refers to setback from Epping Road right of way. So there's no special consideration in this district for side yard. Uh, and the only, uh, the only special criteria to be applied here is, is from front road, from front yard, from, from Epping Road. Okay. And you can't look at other zones because you can't have a sign at all anyhow. So. Right. Right. So, so I think okay. I think we're good. I think we are too. I think if there was a special criteria for any of the roads that 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 come into Epping Road, it would have been stated in here. Um, and frankly, I, I also trust that uh, that uh, that staff got this right in in giving us an application strictly for uh, a variance on the on the setback from the front. Right. Good. good Thank question. you. Good question, though, Rick. Other questions. Well, my only comment is that there's a 58-foot uh, margin between the edge of pavement and front property line now because, and, and you know, Epping Road has had recent work, so it could be that way for years, but 
that wide right of way was acquired for a reason for future develop future growth of, and and widening mm -hmm. and it won't always be that way may not be for a long time but at some point they're going to add lanes and use some of that right of way just saying mm -hmm. so just think about that when you yeah. you know the argument is a good one but it it's impermanent yeah it's a good point this is a stretch that this is the only piece of Epping Road that already has three lanes on it because there is a dedicated turning lane right in front of this property, which is not elsewhere. So the, the pit has already been utilized to some extent. And as I said, they recently added the light and improved it. So it's not going to happen for a long time. But I do know that um, there was there were inquiries about improving the ramps off of 101 and left-hand turn lanes to get to some of these properties off of Continental. Um, because the town has been seeking and developers are starting to respond to the fact that this part of town could be, could see additional development. So it's, it could happen someday. May I, will be wider. I think one of the issues one of the issues for us to consider here is, of course, that uh, consistency with, with other properties in the district uh, and whatever uh, variance we're being asked to grant here does not exceed um, the conditions that exist on, on other properties in the same district and especially the abutting, not abutting, but the properties to the immediate north. Mr. Lampert, you had your hand up there for a sec or Mr. Arnold? I did, or John, go ahead if you want. Uh, thanks. I was just gonna. I was just gonna add that um, I, I wanted to point out that yes, it is certainly possible. This is part of the right of way. The road could be widened at some point in the future. No one expects that to be anytime soon, but it, it, it's a valid point. And I, I do. Um, I, I did want to highlight Mr. Pryor's point that there already is a, a left-hand turn lane here, which is you know would be kind of the immediate need for for widening if that weren't there. And also point out that in the uh, zoning ordinance, the issue that we're talking about is the requirement that the second 70, this, excuse me, the second 25 feet uh, be landscaped. And so, you know, even if, and, and right now there's about 65 feet of green space. So the, the, the road could be widened quite a bit still and still be well within that, you know, the perception at least that there's at least, you know, 50 feet or 20, the second 25 feet being, uh, being green space. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm, I also sit on the TIF board, and we've met out there several times and met with um, the town. And they just put in the traffic light and all the infrastructure for that, moved the telephone poles. I mean, several hundred thousand dollars worth of work just went into that. That is not going to be ripped down and changed to put in more pavement there. You, you're talking about having to move the entire intersection up continental to make that work, to do anything. And, and like, as you already know, there's already three lanes there as there is. Okay, thank you both. Uh, Ms. Sermon. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to, to kind of reiterate, first I, I drove down and looked at the site um, today as well. And I like what you said earlier about the, the consistency of the signs, because at first I thought, wow, because I'm very familiar with that road. I, I thought, let me see what this really looks like. And the first thing I noticed as I came down the road, which you're down there a million times, you don't think of something, but I did notice all those signs and I thought, this would be consistent. I, it surprised me. And I said, you know what, this is going to be fine or it's going to be consistent as you just said. And I also just wanted to um, speak to what Mr. Lambert said about in terms of the whole, uh, that intersection is really recent um, that, that they, I was involved also with the TIF advisory board when I was a select person and we did that recently. Um, so I would, that whole light, the whole third lane to make that easy to turn in. So it would not be something they'd be ripping up, as he said, anytime soon. Yep. But I know I'm not voting on this, but I just wanted to throw that oh, in. You're, you're I, absolutely allowed to speak. I agree with the consistency of that's a commercial district. And, and I would say um, it would it would be in keeping with the other properties for what that is worth. Terrific, thank, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the board? Mr. Baum? Um, yeah, just this for the applicant. Um, 
And what is the size of the proposed sign, freestanding sign? Has that been determined? And if so, what is the proposed size? Chris, I'll let you speak to that. Uh, sure. Uh, can everybody still hear me? My, my mic went out on my, my headset. Yep. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, the uh, the freestanding sign, um, right now, uh, we do not have a, a size of the freestanding sign. Uh, we are looking to uh, comply to the area uh, required. Uh, and if, we, if we're not able to uh, comply, then we would have to come back for uh, additional uh, variances for the sign. And as you've highlighted, it's 24 square feet, 25 foot high, and you're not seeking any relief from That's the not ordinance. Not at this time, correct. Okay. How does that compare roughly? I know the Jaguar, existing Jaguar sign is, is you know, a, not a typical sign, but <laughs> how does that compare roughly for the math-minded engineers if they can answer that? Sure. So, I mean, I mean, look, you know, we you, you would be crazy to say that, um, you know, any applicant does not want to come in here and have uh, the biggest sign possible. Um, you know, we do a lot of um, gas station work for, uh, for my company. Uh, they do range in size. Um, we've had many sites where we've had to comply with the with the smaller size sign uh, as this would be a typical um, freestanding sign for a gas station development could be anywhere from, you know, 75 to 100 square feet. Um, you know, at this time, like, like I said, we, we have not, um, uh, confirmed what size sign we're going to go here. Uh, Tom, you know, Tom Healy is here. Um, he can, you know, add to that if, uh, as needed. Uh, yeah, yes, Mr. Chairman, if I could add to that. Uh, so we haven't really designed the ID sign yet. Uh, 25 feet, 24 square feet is, is very small. And, um, when you have several offerings on the site and as well as want to advertise your fuel prices, which is uh, very important to, to passerby customers. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we come up with a sign and we may be back for seeking relief for the, uh, the ID sign. I can tell you just seeing that uh, Jaguar sign, I, I think that's much, much larger than, than a 24 square foot, but uh, that would really limit us in, to what we could show on the sign. If we have a, if we have a food offering, if we have a car wash and, and the, uh, the, the brand of the, uh, the fuel, um, 24 square feet would be extremely small. But we have many things to work out on this site. We don't have a brand chosen yet for the fuel. Uh, we don't have a co-brand operator yet chosen for the store. So we need to work through those issues. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate the all of your candor about the sign and, and the potential for being back. Um, so thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for members of the board for the applicant? Mr. Arnold, did you wish to speak again? I just wanted to make uh, one clarification, if I may, regarding the first uh, question about the, um, the front, the front yard and the side yard. I was going back and looking at my notes and um, what I just wanted to point out to the extent the board is concerned about that issue is that um, section 5.5.1 of the ordinance sets forth what the side yard setback is for corner lots and, and it refers to the side street uh, as opposed to the front street. So the, the side street, even though it's a, uh, you know, it's a, a street frontage is still considered a side yard setback. Uh, which in this case is still the same 50 feet, um, but section 6.8.2 is what deals with the landscaping requirements and the, si and the signage requirements specifically for the front yard. Um, so 5.5.1 sets forth that, that the side yard uh, is still can still have a, a street frontage and be considered a side yard, and that's where the 50 feet comes from, but the, uh, the requirements of the landscaping and the signage in 6.8.2 don't apply to uh, Continental. Correct. 5.5 .5 refers to your buildings and you are, you're certainly, your structures are uh, within the setbacks. Correct? Yes. All the buildings are within the setbacks. And my point was just that the, that, that section provides the differentiation between still considering it a side yard, even though it has, has street frontage. Right. Understood. Uh, very good. Any other questions for the applicant? Hearing none, I'm going to open this up to the public. Uh, and as before, I'll ask any members of the public, abutters or otherwise, who would like to speak uh, on behalf or against the applicant to identify themselves to Exeter TV, and we'll put you on the air. 
sound like a game show host for a second there. You're not cute enough. I really appreciate that, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Doesn't appear that we have anybody, Dan. Just the one person without a hand raised, correct? Yep, same situation as before. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to close the public session then. Uh, and we've asked our questions of the applicant. There's no need for the applicant to rebut any public testimony. So we will close the public session and move into deliberations. Uh, we have before us two interrelated variances. Uh, we do not need to uh, approve either or both. They are not tied to each other. They can be done separately. Um, and so the first variance, uh, I'll turn the pieces of paper in front of me. The first variance we should discuss would be relief from the requirement that the second 25 foot of the front yard be landscaped. And I would like to treat these separately. Uh, so any comments, questions from the board uh, as far as the request? I just agree uh, that- That 25 feet from the property I just agree that it gets ridiculous at some point. Am I muted? No, I'm not. Um, I no, just agree good. that it gets ridiculous at some point that if the right of way is extraordinarily wide and then the setbacks are huge, that it does make it difficult to do business. It causes hesitation on the part of drivers who are trying to see where they're trying to go. And so I really don't have an issue with this front setback variance. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Any other comments from members of the board? Yeah, I would, I would echo Laura's points. I agree. And I, I appreciate the applicant's point. Um, yeah, the, the fact that this would line up, this allows the buildings to line up uh, with, you know, the closest adjacent building yep. um, and create a, you know, create a, um, you know, a, a equal streetscape that makes a lot of sense to me, and I think that's a that's a valid factor as well. And as Ms. Sermon pointed out, this also creates consistency with the other properties, especially to the north. I guess it's north. I don't see a compass rose on here to the north toward one hundred and one direction. Um, okay, would someone like to walk us through the variance criteria, please, with regard specifically to the landscaping variance? Miss Davies, you're unmuted, so I'm going to ask you to do it. Oh, thanks, Bob. Not a problem. Um, okay, so the variance criteria. Um, the variance is not contrary to the public interest in that the spirit of the ordinance is observed. Um, the proposed use must not conflict with the, the implicit or explicit purpose of the ordinance or alter the essential character of the neighborhood, threaten public health, safety, or otherwise injure public rights. I think we kind of covered this, the applicant covered this in their presentation that um, this will be consistent with the, with the neighborhood. It won't alter its character in any way. Yep. That the wide right of way will, you know, in, in go in a, a long way towards fulfilling the intent of the ordinance. So I think we're fine on one and two. Okay. Well, and it's also a substantial upgrade as to what's there now. True. Um, so number three is that substantial justice is done. The benefit to the applicant should not be outweighed by harm to the general public or other individuals. I don't really see any harm to the public or any um, individuals. I think this is an improvement and a benefit. Um, I don't know if anybody has any other thoughts on this, but I think we're um, in the clear regarding criteria three. Okay. Um, values of surrounding properties are not diminished. Um, there's no testimony regarding this from the public and the applicant asserts that this is an improvement, which I would have to agree with. And um, so I, you know, being a 
valuation person, I'd have to say that I, I don't see any con uh, concerns in this area and none have been brought forth in the discussion. And we often defer to your expertise on this issue, so we're good there. Thank you. So literal enforcement of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship is the, um, the fifth criteria. And um, I'm not gonna read all of this, but no, I, <laughs> I don't see um, any reason to put literal enforcement on this application. Um, the idea that there's so much um, green space in the right of way and that it's consistent with the other properties, to me, um, it would be a hardship on the applicant to have to, you know, comply with that um, in the literal sense of the word. And that in the spirit, you know, that of the ordinance, they're sort of complying using the public right of way as some of the green space. So um, I think that there is a hardship here and that there is no benefit to um, literal enforcement. Does that cover that adequately? I think you did great. I would go ahead and say, make a motion. So I um, move to um, approve the application for variance. Oh, let me get the right part. For relief from section, from Article 6, Section 6.8.2, for relief from the requirement that the second 25 feet of the front yard be landscaped. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Reminder that, Mr. Merrill, you're voting on this. Uh, so, we have a motion to approve. Ms. Davies. <laughs> That's my dog. Um, I, um, I vote in favor. Mr. Th I, I, took the, I took the bark as a yes. Mr. Yes. Thielbar. I vote aye. Mr. Baum. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Pryor votes aye. With respect to the uh, landscaping portion of the variance request, uh, it is approved 5 0. Uh, let's now do the same thing. Uh, Mr. Baum, would you walk us through the variance criteria for uh, the sign, please? Sure. And I will, yeah, I just decided, I mean, this one I find a little, just a little harder than the other, but not, I think the same criteria, the same factors apply. Um, and then just as an aside and looking at the looking at the layout of the lot, there's really no other place to put this sign that makes any sense, given the shared existing shared driveway, um, the, the drive on to Continental. So, um, I mean, given that and given everything we've talked about it, it really the, the sign um, makes sense to me as well. So I will then go through the criteria. Uh, one, that the variances will not be contrary to the public interest. As, as Laura explained in the last one, it's, the issue is whether uh, the variance would violate basic zoning objectives or alter the central character of the locality or threaten public health, safety, or welfare. Um, it, it, none of those are, are threatened here. Um, it is, as we noted, it's consistent with um, the, you know, the general character of the locality, given uh, consistency with other um, other properties, signs for other properties in the area, um, and there will be no risk to public health, safety, or welfare. It'll actually help, it should help guide uh, motorists here uh, easier uh, without having them take their eyes off the road to see what the, to see the sign. So uh, the spirit of the ordinance is observed, uh, it's similar to the, um, uh, uh, to the landscaping, um, the goal here is to provide, you know, some landscaped area uh, at the front of the lot that is, um, or not landscape, 
you know, uh, has some distance for the sign from the front of the lot that's met here because of the existing right of way. Um, and I think would really result in a sort of an absurd situation if, if forced to comply with the ordinance. Um, substantial justice is done, and the that's a balancing test between, um, you know, uh, harm to the applicant and benefit to the general public. Here, you know, that, as we've discussed, there's really no uh, you know, benefit in, to the public in denial, and it would certainly be a great hardship um, and detriment to the applicant. Um, so, um, and the values of surrounding properties are not diminished. Again, no evidence to the contrary. There, overall, this is going to um, this is going to improve this uh, property and and should improve property values uh, because of it. Um, and then the hardship, no fair and substantial relationship exists. Uh, this property is unique because of the wide um, right of way here. Um, again, the, the general purposes of the ordinance provision, which is not have signs right on the roadway uh, where people are driving, uh, is met because of the of the um, wide right of way. Um, and lastly, the proposed use is reasonable. Uh, this is a gas station. It's you know it's permitted by special exception, as we already said. It's it's intended for this area. Um, and it, it's only reasonable to allow a, a sign um, visible from the roadway uh, to access the, the property and the gas station. Very so good. With, with that, I will make a motion. To approve the variance application as presented. Uh, for variance from section 6.8.2 to allow a pylon sign to be located approximately seven feet from the front lot line where a 35 foot setback is required. Seconded. Uh, second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, I'll call the vote. Uh, Ms. Davies. I vote aye. Mr. Thielbar. Aye. Mr. Baum. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Pryor votes aye. With respect to the sign, your variance request is approved 5 0. You're three for three, guys. Well done. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time this evening while we work through the issues to make sure we fairly represent the town of Exeter. Thanks for bringing your business to us. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, members of the board. I appreciate your working through that. That's the end of new business. There are two uh, aspects of other business, even though there's one thing on the, um, uh, only one thing listed on the uh, agenda. So we have to approve minutes. Uh, and just so we're all prepared, um, I just wanted to let you know that um, the current chair, Joanne Petito, is not going to be renewing her term, uh, her position on the uh, zoning board. Uh, her term expires in April. Uh, and so she will not be uh, continuing on the zoning board of adjustment. Uh, the result of that is that uh, one of the current uh, five alternates uh, will need to become a regular voting member of the board. Um, uh, Ms. Davies, Mr. Thielbar, Mr. Baum all have terms that expire in 2022 or 2023. Mine expires in April, but I have asked to be reappointed to the board as a voting member. Uh, and so there is one opening for a, a voting member, for a regular member on the board. Um, the way the procedure works is that regular members, so in this case, Davies, Thielbar, Baum, and Pryor, since Joanne's not here, Ms. Petito's not here, can nominate uh, one of the alternates uh, or more than one of the alternates, and then we conduct a vote. Um, the alternates are Esther Olson Murphy, Martha Panel, Chris Merrill, Hank Wimet, and Ann Sermon. So, uh, would any of the regular members like to nominate uh, one of the alternates to become a, a regular member, a voting member? I would like to ask the alternates who would like to become a regular member. So we have a, a willing pool of people to choose from. Is that appropriate? 
I think it's entirely appropriate. For the members are here, I believe that uh, Mr. Wimet's absence is quite intentional on Hank's part. I think he's I think he's done. I do too. Uh, his term expires this year, and I think I think Hank is done. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Ms. Olson Murphy, are you willing to be considered for a regular member? Sure. Dad would be proud. <laughs> uh, Ms. Pennell. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm here. Oh. Um, I feel that I've been on the board for a very long time, and I think that maybe it's time for a younger person uh, to join. But if, if nobody else will come forth, and I will, but I really feel that you should um, nominate a, a younger person. Thank you, Martha. Mr. Merrill. I think I'll go with Esther and let her and her legacy. Uh, Ms. Sermon. Right. I think since Esther's been here a long way longer than I'm brand new, so I would definitely think Esther's the right one to go. Um, I, you all can vote, but I think she's certainly the right one to be the next full-time member. And I have a lot to learn. And it's been, yeah, it's been great. So I'll, I'll be happy to be an alternate. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, we have one person who's willing to run then. <laughs> that didn't go as planned. <laughs> yeah. You forgot to step back. Tough. Well, you'll get for asking me first. Ms. Davies, would you like to make a nomination? <laughs> I would like to nominate Esther. I think she'll be fantastic. And I'll second her here. Excellent. You've got at least three seconds because I second it as well, even though I'm not allowed to. Uh, I, think, I think that's a great choice. All those in favor of appointing Esther Olson Murphy as a regular voting member of the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Do we have to effective, do this? Effective April 2021. Please indicate by saying aye. Ms. Davies. Aye. Mr. Thielbar. Aye. Mr. Baum. Aye. And Mr. Pryor votes aye. Congratulations, Esther. Welcome. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the other alternates for graciously allowing that vote to proceed the way it did. And um, I hope you will all consider and will continue in your alternate roles. Um, with Ms. Petito's um, stepping down from the board and, uh, and Esther moving up, we will have an opening for an alternate. So if any of you knows a uh, person in town who would like to, or express an interest, or if Exeter TV, if anybody's actually watching this, uh, would like to join the uh, Zoning Board of Adjustment as an alternate, we have a position open and would welcome your application. And I would like to commend our alternates for being so dedicated and regularly involved because a lot of times alternates only attend if they've been called upon to act as a voting member. And you guys are always involved and appreciated and have great input. So thank you. Here, here. Well said, Laura. Thank you very much. Uh, final um, uh, item of business is the approval of minutes of February 16, 2021. Uh, so this will be Pryor, Thielbar, Baum, Pennell, Merrill, Olson, Murphy, and Sermon all uh, participated in this meeting. So um, I have read through the minutes uh, and find them Joanna, to be absolutely spot on. Does anybody else have any comments on the um, February 16th minutes? Yes. So the minutes, as you point out, are excellent as usual. But if we could go to line 54, the last sentence uh, is not easy to understand if you weren't there. And I suggest that we add, take away the period, obviously, and add from the existing second floor. This is line 54. So a dormer will be added to the existing roof for access to the space. Again, Rick. From the existing second floor. Okay. Everybody else okay with that clarification? 
Okay, that sounds good. Anything with that, else? It's fine with me. Yeah. Any other comments on the uh, February 16th minutes? Okay, um, just to show a hands on this, I think it's sufficient. All those in favor of approving the minutes, uh, just a show of hands, yes. I think we're pretty good on this one. That was 100%. Well done. Thank you for the correction. Uh, any additional business or comments? Motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Hey, seconded. <laughs> okay. Um, very good. Um, reminder, we will need at the next meeting to... Um, no, we don't. Never mind. I was going to say, Rick and I, as the two officers, will continue until the normal turnover of um, officers takes place in June. Yeah, I'm, I'm, counting, I, I'm counting on your continued good health. I'm getting my second shot tomorrow. Good health is in my future. Well, I get mine next Tuesday. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you all very much. I appreciate your participation this evening, and we'll see you all around town. Wow, it's over. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Night. Thanks.